am, uh, God has given me an interesting message tonight, and I'm hoping you will also uh, learn from it or be interested in it. Now, the title of it is Alvin. Y'all remember Alvin, right? You remember the chipmunks? And uh, so um, the other day, I don't know about you guys, introduce yourself, put in the chat where you're from. Uh, my name is Chris Fotaco, and this is Live at Five. I forgot to put that part. Um, how many of you enjoy sitting in your garden, in your backyard, maybe sitting on your deck and just enjoying the weather? Now, of course, in the hotter areas of our country, you're like, not this time of year, Chris, maybe in the fall. But I live in the North Carolina mountains, and literally it's chilly in the mornings. It's wonderful to sit out there and just watch the and listen to the birds and just enjoy the scenery around you. And so I don't know about you, but do you enjoy it? Um, so the other day, um, I have moved to a new place, and there's an upstairs and a downstairs. The upstairs has a porch, and I have some bird feeders on it, and the downstairs doesn't have anything yet. It's just like a little patio, and that's kind of where I spend my time talking to the Lord in the morning. And the other day, I was sitting there, and, and I was going, you know what? I need to get some bird feeders up because I love watching the birds eat. Um, and my other house I had uh, multiple bird feeders, and I would sit out on my porch, and I would just watch them, and I so enjoyed feeding the birds and uh, and of course the other animals too that would, would eat eat from it but I just said I gotta get my bird feeders up I, I just haven't had a chance it's, I've been busy and so um, I was down there doing my quiet time and all of a sudden I was sitting there thinking of how I need to get my bird feeders up and I saw this chipmunk come out of the rock and he ran up and he like looked at me and he reached down and he grabbed something and ran off and I was like what is he getting I haven't put any bird food out and then it hit me, he was getting the leftover bird food that was coming from upstairs. That as the birds were eating out of the, the larger container, it was dropping good and, and old seed, right? The hull, the husks, but it was also dropping good seed. And so that chipmunk was eating what was left over. And I thought to myself, wow, this chipmunk is gleaning. He's gleaning. And then soon after that, I started seeing birds and they were getting the leftover and it made me smile because I thought to myself, look how God provides. You know, in the Bible, gleaning is a very common uh, activity. Um, often a farmer would uh, allow people, poor people and travelers to, to stop and glean from his fields. I mean, the, the main farmers would, would go in and get all of the crop and they would go and get the thing, the crop, the, the, the fruit that you would see that was quite visible and often leave parts of the crop that wasn't as visible or things that fell on the ground. And so the, the scripture was a great scripture. This is from Leviticus. 19 9 through 10 if somebody's watching if you would put the whole verse Leviticus 19 9 through 10 it says when you reap the harvest of your land you shall not reap your field right up to its edge neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest and you shall not strip your vineyard bare neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard you shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner I am the Lord your God this is interesting while the birds could eat out of the feeder upstairs, the chipmunk couldn't. And he had to find an alternative source for the food. And I love how God even provided for this little chipmunk. But isn't that the way God does for all of us? So I was thinking to myself, what, what have I learned from this little chipmunk, who was really fast, by the way? You know, what, did, what did I learn from him? And what was God's message to me? And I hope you will learn something from this too. And uh, feel free to put anything in the chat. First, God provides, right? Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Every need. Now, we're not talking about just wants, okay? These are our needs. A lot of times we mix those two up. And I know because I had a big life lesson when I was young because I thought I had to have certain things. And I learned that those were wants, not needs. But God provides. That's the first thing. Number two, and I'm sure God's provided for you too, right? God's probably provided for you in crazy ways, right? This is the next one. God provides in such a way that we didn't expect. How was God provided for you in ways that you haven't expected? Matthew 6, 22 to 33. I'm sorry. Matthew 6, 32 to 33 says... 
For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The Lord knows what you need from the intangible to the tangible, from a parking spot at, at the local shopping center to, I can't find my keys, right? My friend Michelle Hip, she just got married. Michelle's one of our leaders for the Labor Day team. I remember when I first met her, she says, yep, we just packed up everything in the car that fit in the car. And we moved to North Carolina, me and my two kids. And I said, and I was like, she didn't have anything. And she goes, yeah, well, God will provide. God will provide a couch. God will provide a toaster. God will provide a microwave. And God provided. There were times that God would say, okay, you're going to pay for this out of the money. And then other times he says, nope, you're going to wait. And you're going to go without. And you're going to have to adjust. And I love that because it's not always about putting money on something. It's also about waiting and letting God show up how he provides, especially uh, when it's something that you always wanted and not necessarily something you've needed. Now, while God gives money, and there are times he, he wants us to wait, he'll provide in other ways. The issue a lot of times, though, is that we don't want to wait, right? I've been in situations where I have needed financial provision, and it has showed up in the most unlikely ways from the most unlikely people. People I never thought could ever give me any financial help just surprise me and the ones that I thought could don't and I just I've stopped worrying about it I've stopped because I know God's got me and God speaks to his people he speaks to those who are following him and he tells them just like he's told me to take care of this person or take care of that person or give this away or give that away right um, when I've needed help in ministry and I've prayed and prayed and prayed God has showed up when I uh, was speaking, almost all my speaking now, I don't get paid for it. I've literally become like a missionary. And yet God's like, you know what, Chris? I got you. You keep doing what I've called you to do, and I'm going to take care of you. I've needed help when I moved recently. And oh my goodness, at the people that showed up to help. And I still do a little bit of graphic design on the side, websites and things, because when the jobs aren't there, the speaking, the income, God provides some tent making for me. And I'm so thankful because at one time I resented it. <clears throat> now I look at it as like, thank you, Lord. It's your provision for me. What about you? How has God provided for you in unusual circumstances? Put in the chat. How has he come up with things that you thought, no way. Maybe it was a car. You know, maybe it was a place to live. You know, maybe it was something tangible or maybe it was something else. Number three for me is God provides in ways that may require something of, from us. It's much easier to pull fruit from a full tree than it is to find the pieces of fruit that you've missed or the ones on the ground that aren't rotten. You know, I've just uh, I've been growing tomatoes and cucumbers. Cucumbers are definitely gone, but the tomatoes are still there and you have to lift sometimes up to be able to find the ones that are hidden underneath. Well, obviously, if you're in a hurry and you're just trying to get what you see because you're hurry, you're picking lots and lots of fruit, you're going to leave behind those pieces of fruit. So I believe God provides some ways that may require us to do a little bit of work to get it. Now, let me go through some ideas and let's see if any of these you connect with. So God may, prov may expect us to take a risk or get out of our comfort zone or to trust him more. Um, God may ask us to take a different job or move to a new place. Uh, he may ask us to serve the Lord in a different way or give up something or someone. Oh. I know in the new Bible study, the intentional relationship study with Pastor Dan and I, we talk about relationships and the risk it involves. It's so easy to just hang out with the crowd that we're used to. Uh, before we were saved. It's so easy to go along with those that we work with and laugh and joke and go to the bar after work than to choose God's best. You know, God always provides for us. He wants you to choose the right friends that will help you grow in the Lord. Not that we don't need to be around lost people, but I'm talking about people that can easily pull us from God. New friends, but new friends, a different lifestyle that means going to church, choosing not to watch certain movies or certain music, Choosing to read your Bible is God's nourishment for you. It's a way of him providing for your life that leads to life versus leading to death. 
so for some of us, God's provision comes in a way that we're like, I know that's better and that's going to be healthier, but I want this. And that includes food too, right? There's food that adds to our nourishment and get, it helps us stronger. And there's food that pulls us down and makes us feel bad. Our sugars go up, our blood pressure go up. We become lethargic. That's not provision. Provision brings life. That'll kill you. We're all there. I bet you everyone watching has made those struggles. Whether it's food or whether it's what we're watching on TV, whether it's you know how we're spending our money, God always provides a way so that it's going to bring health, right? Have you ever had to make changes to receive God's provision? Put that in the chat. Have you ever had to make changes to receive God's provision? Number four is God's provision may not just be in material things, but it may also be emotional, mental, spiritual. He may provide counseling, the support of friends or family when we most need it. And you think, I'm good, I got this. I'm okay, I don't need anybody. I can, I can do this work by myself. I can serve in this ministry by myself. I can, I can, I, 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 I can. And then you realize, no, God didn't design us to be by ourselves. God designed us to be together. And I know it's hard because not everybody does things the way you do things and, and they may disappoint you and, and they may uh, uh, fail and, and they may have a different method or whatever, but it's not about the project. It's about the relationship. Sometimes we're going through a really tough situation and God brought somebody around that just gives you comfort and says the right words to encourage you. That's God's provision. He may provide love and acceptance deep friendship or spouse. He may, for those of you that are married, he may provide a spouse that really listens to you and cares about you and, and affirms you and, and encourages you and helps you grow towards the Lord. You thought, oh, I'm good. I, I can read. I can do my own Bible by myself. And then you realize, wow, I, this is a helpmate. God put this person in my life to help me. He may also give you peace about something that you've been stressing out about. Philippians 4, 11 through 12 says, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. Now, this is Paul talking. I know how to be I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. And in and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I love that. That Paul is finally at a place of peace. He's like, you know what? I'm good. I'm okay. And that's another form of provision. When you can get to where you're not so anxious and so stressed out about things because you know God has got you. God's taking care of you. God is supplying all the things that you need. And there are days where you have extra dessert. And there are days he said no. There are days that you get to put your feet up and days that you got to put your feet down and get walking, right? There are days where you get to sleep in. There are days you got to get up early, depending on what God wants you to do, right? That's Paul. He's talking about he's had everything and he's had nothing. And either way, he's he's good. He may answer questions that you've been asking for a long time. And he's finally providing the answers. He may also remind you of past provision so you can learn to stop being so anxious about today. My mom, oh my goodness, there were years that went by that I didn't know if the mortgage was going to be paid. My mom goes, well, did he pay it last month? Yeah. Did he pay the month before? Yeah. And the month before? Uh-huh. Well, why do you think he'd stop paying now? I don't know. Why are you so worried? God has provided. Now, I'm not saying that sometimes things don't happen because of something we've done. Maybe we're not good with our money. And as a result, we don't make our bills on time because we're out spending money or we're not good budgeting or we're living in a house that's too much. And I know right now a lot of us are... Your rent has gone up and gas prices have gone up and I know we're being able to adjust, we're having to cut back in certain areas, but I still believe that God provides. It may be in the way he wants versus the way we want. That's an important key, right? Psalm 37, 25 through 26 says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become a blessing. I love that. The older you get, the more you can look back and go, oh my goodness, God provided a home, a food, I have a car. Oh, thank goodness I didn't get that. Or thank goodness I didn't want that. And you look back and you see 
when God said yes and when God said no. Sometimes he doesn't provide everything that we want. You know, I'm still praying for a spouse. You know, that's something I want and he hasn't provided. But he's provided the most amazing set of friends. Those days when it gets tough, I have the best of people around me to help me get through those days. Here's another one. He will protect you against the devil, right? That's a provision. John 10, 10, one of my favorite verses, the, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's provision. Giving you life is provision, but the enemy wants to take your life. He wants to take your stuff. He wants to take your value, your dreams, your hope, your courage. He wants to take your salvation. He wants to keep you from getting saved. That's what the devil does. And God is providing for you. He's providing you to have a brain to be able to bind the enemy, a brain to be able to know how to run from a situation, to be able to discern what is from God and what is from the enemy, what's the goal of the enemy, what's the goal of God. I love it also when God does the unexpected. You can put this in the chat. Maybe you have a few unexpected provisions. When you're having a tough day and somebody texts you and says, I'm praying for you. And they didn't even know what you needed. Pastor Freddie did that for me this morning. He says, I don't know. I was just praying for you this morning. I'm like, let me give you a list. But I had just twisted my ankle. And while I'm able to walk, praise the Lord, that was my prayer. It's very sore and I can't turn it but a certain angle, right? But that's exactly what had just happened. He, he didn't know. But isn't that wonderful how God provides that? Or maybe a song on the radio. You're just going down the road and all of a sudden a song will come on and you just feel so... You just feel God's Holy Spirit all around you, telling you it's going to be okay. He's got you. Or maybe a verse in your quiet time, just that particular verse hits you in a way other verses haven't, and God is just reminding you he's got you. He's going to take care of everything. What are some more ways that God has provided for you? So here's the one thing. Here's one more thing that I've learned. God expects us to allow others to glean from us. What? God expects us to allow others to glean from us? What does that mean? Out of your abundance, you're supposed to let other people take from your abundance. Whether it's food, whether it's stuff, whether it's a word from the Lord, whether it's uh, uh, counseling, whether it's to come and put your arm around them. Whatever you have abundance because you're filled with the Holy Spirit led by the Lord, we are to give that away. This means whatever we have extra physical to spiritual, teaching the word, witnessing, serving, we should be fruitful. Just like last week's message about being a fruit inspector. We have to have fruit in order for people to glean. Do you have fruit? Are you serving the Lord? Are you walking with him? Do you have a relationship with him? If you're watching this and you don't have a relationship with him, you're not sure if you're saved. I pray right now that you would accept the Lord. I pray right now that you would believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on the cross for your sins because you are a sinner. You need to admit that you're a sinner and that you need him to forgive you for your sins. And the only way to God is through Jesus Christ, knowing that he died. You need forgiveness of your sins. All you have to say is, Lord, I need forgiveness. I Today, I accept your uh, what you did on the cross for me and I want to follow you. That's simple. 1 Timothy 5, 8 says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and worse than an unbeliever. God's kind of serious about this. Some of you are hoarders. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of stuff. You got a lot of stuff where you can't get into some rooms. You can't even open up your home to anybody because you got so much stuff. Nobody can sleep on an extra bed because it's covered up with stuff. You keep spending your money on stuff that doesn't matter instead of spending it on the things of the kingdom. You've got more clothes than you need, more jewelry than you need, more shoes than you need, more gadgets than you need. And you know what? I've got some of that too. And slowly and slowly and slowly I'm getting rid of everything. If I'm not wearing it, it's going away. If I haven't worn it in a while, it's going away. If I've got extras of things and I don't need it, I need to give it away. You do too. It's a part of the gleaning process, a part of what we leave left over. Not yucky. Because the fruit of a big tree that's being picked still has wonderful, perfect fruit on it. So it's not giving away our junk that we don't even want. But what do we give that we have in abundance that's fruitful and beautiful and delicious? This past weekend, uh, my friend Roseanne's mom passed away, Karen Benicky. Benicky. I always want to say Benicky. Benicky. And uh, Karen was my friend too. 
and uh, she'd been sick for a while. She'd had a stroke about 10 years ago, and but she was doing great. I mean, they, she came all the way back from a stroke to drive in a car. She just wasn't able to talk. But then she developed cancer, and and uh, and so she was doing great. She was in remission. She was uh, up living life again, and she was uh, cooking and cleaning. She loves to cook. And then in the last few days, her health just went really bad. And over the weekend, she passed away. And so... It was hard. It's, it's been a hard week um, because even though she'd been sick, she was doing better. And so it was unexpected. And, and so I've been ministering to my friend, Roseanne. Roseanne's one of our leaders for our Labor Day retreat. And I've been ministering to her and she said something amazing to me. She said, you know, after my, my, my mother died, my grandmother on her father's side called to tell her that she loved her. And she said she really hadn't said that in years. And, and then she said her sister-in-law had been helping and she had stepped up and she was helping to support and 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 really could not believe just the help she was getting she said you know maybe my mom's death will help heal and restart some of my other relationships and i was like yeah that's how god works god provided healing of her family in a way that she wasn't expecting god truly does work in mysterious ways one of the things that was very important for Roseanne was to make sure that her mom, that she knew when she died, she was going to heaven. And Roseanne made sure of that. But I want to make sure you do too. Or maybe you need to be reminded. You need to ask God to remind you of all the ways he's provided. Create a blessings list. And every time you start to whine and complain because you don't have what you want, when you want it, how you want it, go back and look at that list and go, I'm sorry. How do you need peace? That God's provision is the best way versus what you believe provision should be. I know I do. Acts 20, 35 says, And all things I have shown you that by my working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this special time with friends, new friends, old friends. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for reminding me through this little chipmunk, Alvin, my little chipmunk and how, you know what? You even provided for him the leftovers that came from the top. But Lord, you, you provide for us all in the ways that we see and the things we don't see and the way it comes. So Lord, help us to remember that and be okay like Paul to have, be valuing the, the, the times that we have a lot and valuing the times we don't have much because no matter what, we lean on you. Thank you, Lord. And we pray right now in Jesus' name, amen. So again, for those of you who didn't get a chance to see the other video, we do want you to come to Labor Day, labordaysingles.org. You got questions, Missy's more than, more than happy to help you. This is our last Live at Five. Uh, next Sunday, we will be in the middle of the retreat, so we won't have Live at Five. And then the next one, I will be in England. I'm going to go to England for two weeks to do some different ministry things. So hopefully it all goes well. I'll be I'll be coming live from you from England to be lovely. Got to get my accent back. And so thank you, everybody, for your support, financial, emotional, prayer, uh, all the things that you do to help keep us doing, keep singles ministry growing, um, keeping people uh, connected to the cross and to each other. God bless. Until next time. Bye.